is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back. I'm going to have a fun show today. I'm going to get into Tim Zoo's performance. Um, son of a legend. How'd he do? Um, he, he won. He outpointed. Go check out a lot of thoughts on this. Before we get into this, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. It comes at you uh, every day. We're going to do every day again. Um, eight to ten minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, let's get in. And also subscribe to the other channel. Um, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Um, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Let's get into um, Tim Zhu because it, it, it was it was an interesting performance. He, he outpointed Gouche, and, and um, Gouche is a a pretty good fighter. He um, had a draw with Austin Trout. <clears throat> Uh, well, he got destroyed by Laura back in 2017. He picked up a win over Joey Hernandez, first round knockout. Uh, then had a uh, draw with Austin Trout in uh, 2019. He fought once in 2020. Uh, lost a competitive fight to Lubin. Um, and then he uh, destroyed Jamonte Clark in two rounds. And he got a hot streak. He was looking good. Um, and I, I don't think the performance was bad against Tim Zhu. Um, but you can see he he operates just below the highest level, right? Like he he, he loses to all the top guys. He lost to Lubin, uh, Trout, and Laura. Oh, well, he got he got to draw it loud, uh, Trout, and then he got he got destroyed by Laura. Uh, but he's got skills. He's got decent speed. He's he's a pretty good fighter. Um, if he had more pop, he'd be a great fighter. He'd be an elite level fighter. He's just he operates just below that level right now. Um, and I think Zoo's performance was good in a lot of ways, and I, I think it was lethargic in a lot of ways. Um, he obviously got dropped in the first round. Um, he's easy to hit. He's so easy to hit. Um, I, I think, how would I define him? Um, he's similar to, to Hurd in the way, Jarrett Hurd in a way that he's such, such a force. Like He just comes at you. Um, I, I think he's fighting in the wrong weight class. I, I think some of the reasons why he, he doesn't seem to have the power that he used to, um, why he's he's you know getting dropped, is simply because he's he's too big for the weight class and he's cutting too much weight. Um, he he, he didn't get knocked out. Neither was less to fight. He's he's fought in a way and he fought Couche, Um and that was coming off. You know, he had a bunch of knockouts earlier um, against lesser opponents. He got a knockout over Dennis Hogan. Um, he got a knockout over Jeff Horn in a 10 round fight. Um, and, and, and you haven't seen him really hurt and put his opponents in a lot of trouble. Um, as for the performance itself, he cuts off the ring well. Um, Zoo. He keeps it, he keeps it in the ropes, he keeps it in the corner, he doesn't let you move around, he doesn't just chase you around. That's good. He is, and he, and he does that well considering he is a slow plotting fighter. I mean, he's slow. He's not his dad. He, he he's kind of lethargic. He he's just kind of you know systematic. He just comes at you. He throws a lot of right hands, um, lead right hands. He can be countered. Um, I, I really think a left hook artist. A hooker could could really give him a lot of trouble. A guy with speed who can move, who can move around the ring and kind of beat you up on the inside. I think Laura, I know Laura fights at 160 now, but I, um would destroy this guy. You know, Charlo, Jamel Charlo, little Charlo is is the interesting one. Um, because Charlo can outbox him for days, but Charlo likes to stand in a little bit too much. Um, I, I think Castano is is too skilled on the inside. Um, I think it's a fun fight, uh, but I, I don't, I, I don't see Zoo there yet. And I'm not saying he's not, he's not a problem. He's definitely a problem. He, he does, he, what he does, he does really well. I just think he's flawed in too many other ways. 
He's easy to hit. He's slow. His power. I know he's supposed to be a big hitter. You know, I I know his knockout percentage is good. He's not knocking out top notch fighters. Um, he's not really even hurting them. Uh, and he lands a lot of big shots. He's easy to hit. If you if you can move, if you can stay out, if you can use angles on him, I I think he can be had. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult because he is a force. It's like I used to pick against Hurt all the time too, for, for a lot of the same reasons. I, I think he's a little more finely tuned than Hurt. I don't know. Hurt has like that thud of thudding concussive power. You know that beat you up kind of power. I, I, I thought to do had that. I'm, I'm not sure he does. Um, I'm not sure that he has, you know, the heart and determination and, and, and the punch output that, that, that Hurt has at that higher level. I, I don't know that he could sit there and bang and bang in, in a phone booth um, with, say, a Castano or something like that, right? I, 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 um, Jason Rosario, that would be a problem. Like, this guy is at 154 and 160. We're going to give him problems. And I'm not saying he can't beat these guys. Um, but he, he's got a lot of flaws. And I, I I just don't see him running through a division, beating everyone in the division with, with glaring flaws like that. Flaws like that. Um, again, and Goucher is not a bad fighter. I think Goucher is pretty good. He's a borderline top 10 kind of guy. Um, he, he loses to all the A fighters and, and kind of beats everyone else. He's kind of a B-plus fighter. And I don't mean that to be insulting. He's an Olympian. He's got skills. He's got speed. Um, he just lacks power. Um, he's good, though. Like, I, I think Goucher has skills. I, I just don't think he's got enough at the high level. And I thought the fight was competitive. Um, I, I, I had a 115-112. Same as one of the – Patrick Morley – had at 115-112. It was close. So, Goucher did enough to win rounds. Um, I, I think Zhu, it's a good performance. He shows that he's an elite. By beating Goucher, he shows that he's an elite 154-pounder. I think he's in the wrong weight class. I'd like to see him go up to 160. Um, I, I, he's big. He's he's a big, strong kid for sure. Back you down. He can use his size. He can muscle you up. You know, his power, I, I don't think it's great power, uh, but it's pretty good. I, I do like to see how he will take shots. I like to see his power when he's not hydrated. Does anyone know what he came in at, what he weighed at uh, for this fight? Um, But I, I don't see him beating Kassan. I, I don't see him beating Charlo, although Charlo could be his own worst enemy in that fight. He really good. Jamal Charlo could really be his own worst enemy in that fight. Um. You know the the other names. I'm, I'm at 54. Um, Erickson Lubin, I, I think is is too talented for him. Madrimov, I'm not overly impressed with Madrimov, and as that, there's not a ton of names. Uh, so uh, look, if, if if Charlo wins, if he beats Castano, which I'm picking, Charlo's going to go up to 160. I would imagine, so, and he would vacate all the belts, and then all the belts would become available. Um. If Castano was I imagine Castano, who's a small 54, stays at 54 and, and kind of makes his makes his mark at 54. Um, but Castano, uh, Charlo, I think, would, would shortly leave the division. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what do you think of Zoo's performance? I'm, I'm, I'm getting opinions from all over the place. I, I thought it was okay. I, I give it a B. I, I just, you know, um, I, I have my concerns about, you know, Zoo's not from Jamel Charlo or, or – or, like you said, Madrimov or, or the other guys in the division who can hit, or definitely the guy. Jose uh, Jesus Ramos, I think, beats him. I'm going to put that on the right. I think Jesus Ramos um, beats Tim Zoo. I would bet the ranch on that, honestly. Um, Ramos is, is is built similarly. He's a big, strong kid, but he moves a lot better. He can fight coming backwards. Like he, he's got a, he's more skilled. Uh, Ramos would, would, would beat, um, Tim Zoo. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, remember to follow 3D Boxing on all forms of social media. Uh, Texas Boxing Scene as well. Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is March 28th, 2022. Uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.